I took an amazing adventure to Greenland with Professor Jeffrey Welker. We met with scientists exploring how ecosystems function in the far north, the Arctic. We're now getting very close to the Greenland ice sheet. We can hear the water rushing off of the ice and cascading down into the river systems. And it's this water that carries dissolved nutrients into North Star Bay. And these dissolved nutrients actually form the basis of the food web. So we have connections between ice, land, and the marine system here in the high Arctic. Figuring out how much the Greenland ice sheet is melting is so important to understanding how our planet is changing. But frozen soils are also melting in the Arctic. The fallout of these changes is very different from melting ice. Soils are packed with nutrients, and one of these, carbon, is the building block for life. Both plants and animals need it. Permafrost, frozen soils, keep the carbon locked away. But if that earth starts to melt, carbon is activated, ready to be used. If tiny microbes eat it, they can actually breathe out CO2, just like we do. If plants use it, they take some CO2 out of the atmosphere, and they also breathe some of it back into the atmosphere. What exactly happens in each environment is a bit different, but there's a darn good chance that the thawing of permafrost will increase greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, causing climate to warm. Water is flowing across the landscape in many places, some of it from the rivers and streams attached to the ice sheet. The water may actually dissolve the carbon that's in the soils and may transport that carbon into the rivers and then into the ocean. This carbon can be of different ages, and we're especially interested in whether or not the water is transporting old or young carbon. If it's ancient carbon, what that means is that the permafrost is thawing in these landscapes and it's releasing old carbon into the rivers and then that old carbon will end up in the oceans. Adam Shank and his assistant Brian are using cutting edge technology to figure out if the soils underground are thawing. We're here sampling rivers for carbon-14 and dissolved organic carbon. We want to measure how much carbon is in the river, and it gives us an idea of how much carbon is flowing off of the tundra, which gives us an idea of how productive the ecosystems are. We want to find out sort of where the carbon is coming from, if it's all just coming from modern plants growing on the landscape, or if there are old stored carbon pools down in the permafrost or even in the ice. My hands are totally numb right now. We are doing some uh, straight concentration of dissolved organic carbon to just tell us how much. But we're also taking 14C samples, and carbon-14 can be used to date how old the carbon is in the rivers. Carbon-14 is produced in the atmosphere. It's uh, basically when ions coming through the atmosphere hit uh, nitrogen in the air, it creates an isotope of carbon called carbon-14. And this carbon-14 gets absorbed by living things when they take in CO2. Once those organisms die, they're no longer taking in CO2. And so that carbon-14 that was in there is what they're left with, and it decays over time. And so we can tell, based on how much carbon-14 is left, how long that material has been around. The big picture relates a lot to sort of the stored carbon and where that carbon's coming from. Because if we have a lot of old carbon, and that old carbon is stored in ice or in permafrost, then we can start to think about if we start warming the Arctic, then all of this old carbon that's stored there is going to start becoming available. And so that's going to lead to uh, greening up of the Arctic and uh, much more available nutrients and a lot more carbon being fluxed into the atmosphere. We study the Arctic because it's uh, not always been this way. It, there was a time when it was much greener than it is now, back when it was warmer, and we're heading towards a time where it might become greener than it is currently. And uh, if that happens, we're gonna have a lot more uh, 
a lot more carbon being used and respired to the atmosphere. I'd say my favorite part about being up here um, from an academic perspective is getting to meet all kinds of different scientists doing work up on the ice sheet, um, microbiology, chemistry, hydrology, folks working with plants, folks working with birds. So just getting to see the, you know, the wide range of, of disciplines being exercised up here. I think it's, it's exciting. It's really exciting um, to know that it's all, it's all one big collaboration and um, our piece relates to the next and uh, every little piece is important to form a big picture.